Hello everyone and welcome back to my wine diary, the channel where everything is related to wine. I have a different background behind me. I am actually on a work trip currently. I still have my full-time job so I get to travel every once in a while. So bear with the different surroundings and let's go ahead and hop right in. As I'm filming this video, today is October 22nd, which means that tomorrow, October 23rd, is the International Day of Champagne. And I figured why not tell you some facts about champagne, tell you what I know, maybe learn something from you in the comments down below. So speaking of those comments, please make sure to leave any comments, any facts that you know about champagne down below. Maybe something that I forgot to mention during this video. Very curious what you've got to say and how do you even like champagne? If you've ever tried champagne before, what is your other favorite type of sparkling wine? Any comments, please leave them down below. And of course, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. It's your subscriptions really is what makes me keep going and creating these videos for you. It helps my channel grow so, so much. So the subscribe button with that notification bell is right down below. Make sure to click on it and give like to this video. Now, I'm not going to lie. I am petrified to film this video for one reason and one reason only. And that is because I will have to open this bottle of bubbly. I am absolutely terrified. I'm not sure what is a stronger word than terrified of opening champagne and sparkling wines. I have no idea why I know how to open them, but the idea of something going wrong or the cork damaging something really sits in my brain and messes with me, not allowing me to enjoy opening a bottle of sparkling wine. Now, as I mentioned, being on a work trip right now, I did not find any champagne in stores around me. So just for the sake of this video and for my desire to have something bubbly while talking to you about champagne, I got myself this little bottle of Prosecco. Uh, Prosecco is an Italian sparkling wine. So it's a bubbly, it's still sparkling. So it kind of looks like champagne. So I figured why not uh, to open this and have some with you. So that said, I am going to open it in front of the camera right now. And let's just, everything goes well. <laughs> so we're going to start here with uh, just removing the foil. Uh, this Prosecco is from Italy, so it comes with this little, um, what is it, like a seal, I guess you call it? What is the proper name? It says the girl with a wine channel. All right, we're removing the seal, removing the foil, and here, like, my heart is already pumping. Whew. So similarly to champagne, and I will talk about this further in the video too, uh, there is a cage holding the cork in. This cage is really your protector, so to say. Without the cage in, uh, there is no certainty that this cork isn't going to fly in while it's still sitting on the shelf. So um, any type of sparkling wine or champagne must come uh, with a cage to hold the cork. Whew. So, oh God. Oh my goodness. I literally am so scared. Oh, you guys, this is hysterical. Okay, okay. I hope I didn't, I, I'm now trying to remember driving back to the hotel. Did I shake the bottle by accident? Okay. I am so scared. Okay. How many times did I say okay? I'm, I'm scared, I'm not gonna lie. This, this is gonna be a long video. Maybe I'll fast forward this. Oh my God. Oh my good. Oh, oh it's coming, it's coming, it's, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> oh my God. Come on. Okay, and this is why I am petrified. My heart is jumping out of my chest right now for this tiny bottle. Can you imagine? This is, this is how strong it was. I'm looking for like holes in the ceiling of my hotel room, thinking about my deposit and credit card on file. I, I think everything is safe. Oh boy, did I deserve this one. Ooh. Cheers. Now that that terrifying moment is behind me, let's talk about champagne or how they call it in France, champagne. 
Champagne is a sparkling wine from France, from the wine region of Champagne. However, a lot of people nowadays just call generically any sparkling wine champagne. I think it's a pretty common term to use. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the bottle was made in Champagne region. Matter of fact, in European Union and a lot of other countries, it is illegal to mark a product champagne unless it comes from the wine region of Champagne and is made under the rules of the appellation. The Champagne region of France is not the easiest one to make wine at. Uh, the reason for that is that the plateau itself, the, the valley of Champagne, is uh, what used to be an ocean very, very many centuries ago. So the surface of Champagne region is full of limestone, which makes it a little bit hard to grow vineyards. So that technically translates into the cost of Champagne and why it's so expensive, but it also translates into why it's so, so well paired with foods like oysters, for instance. So anything that has a little bit of that limestone-ness in it, uh, some ocean taste and saltiness from the ocean, if you can imagine, Champagne would be absolutely uh, paired well with. When it comes to actual grapes, there are three grape types that are used to make Champagne, and those are Chardonnay, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier. So out of the three grape types here, the two Chardonnay and Pinot Noir are mostly used to make, uh, to make Champagne. And then uh, Pinot Meunier is also used, but I would say less popular than Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Now, the funny thing here is that out of the three grapes that I've just named, Two of them are black grapes. Have you noticed that? So only Chardonnay is a white grape. Uh, with the other two, as you can guess, they peel the skin, so they separate the skins from the flesh of the grapes, and that's how the color doesn't get affected, so we get that beautifully um, buttery color of champagne when it's produced. Champagne corks are very unique. Uh, they look a little bit differently than your regular wine cork looks like, and of course that pop um, in a champagne bottle or any other sparkling wine is a part of your experience, so you've got to have it. Now, the interesting fact here is that once the cork is placed inside of the bottle initially, it actually has the same normal shape of any other wine cork, and it's only during the process uh, of second fermentation and wine bottling is when it becomes the shape to hold the pressure of carbon dioxide building in the wine. So I challenge you next time you have some champagne or sparkling wine to keep the cork after you drink the bottle and you will see that over time this cork right here will return into its normal shape and will look like a regular cork of any other wine bottle. This little guy right here is super important. This is called the wire cage and this is really our security. This is what helps us to keep that champagne from popping before it's intended. So the cage here is uh, like a lock. Imagine it being a lock that keeps all of the carbon dioxide, all of the all of the bubbles from coming out while the wine is still sitting on the shelf in a store somewhere. So the pressure that's built within the bottle of champagne or any uh, most of the other sparkling wines as well is about six bars of pressure. That's enough to take somebody's eye out. I mean, let's not forget my experience just a second ago. You saw how powerful this was. So this little guy here holds it all together for us. I did mention second fermentation earlier and I mentioned it on purpose. So for us to have those fine bubbles in champagne, it must go through second fermentation. Now what sets champagne apart from any other sparkling wine is that second fermentation process in champagne uh, or in champagnes is made in the same bottle that wine will be sold afterwards. So instead of doing second fermentation in a tank uh, or injecting it with carbon dioxide, it is actually done within the same bottle. So the added sugar gets eaten by yeast in that bottle and that produces more carbon dioxide and creates that um, those bubbles for us. And since I already mentioned two other types of creating carbon dioxide, uh, Prosecco that I'm drinking today, or Cava, my absolute favorite sparkling wine from Spain. So those two have their second fermentation in the stainless steel tank. So they still go through the second fermentation, but it's done in a tank before bottling, whereas Champagne, um, 
If I'm not mistaken, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that it's the only type of sparkling wine. So champagne is produced uh, within that second fermentation being done in the bottle already. So they bottle it after the first fermentation, then ferment it twice in the bottle, and then they cork it. The carbon dioxide injection method is usually associated with cheaper wines as it is a fast and cheap method of uh, inputting those bubbles into a still, uh, still wine. So those are usually cheaper wines and uh, as a result you will see that they don't have those fine bubbles like champagne does going through the second fermentation in the bottle. We're coming to the tail end of this video, but I have two important things to add here. So first one is your glassware. Let's talk about glassware and how do we drink champagne or any other sparkling wine. So I here have a flute just because it was easy for me to get. Then you have a coupe glass. I will try to insert a picture right here. So you see how a coupe glass looks like. So you probably have seen this before, especially in some films and some movies. Um, and then uh, what else? And what are the benefits of one versus the other? So my personal opinion, and I know that a lot of wine connoisseurs and wine enthusiasts agree with me on this, the coupe, in my opinion, although it looks very pretty, is actually the worst glass you can drink your champagne out of because of the ratio of air to surface. I think it literally um, lets all of the aromas out super fast. It lets all of the carbonation escape really, really fast. So I would not prefer to have my champagne out of a coupe glass um, unless that was my only option. Now, when it comes to flute, it's almost the opposite in a sense that, again, your ratio of air and surface is super small. So here, in my opinion, all the bubbles may stay in the flute longer. You don't really have a lot of opening in that flute glass to, to really get the aromas of your champagne or your sparkling wine. So what do you drink your champagne out of? You say, not directly out of the bottle. I knew you were going to say this, but no, no, no. What I suggest you do is take any simple tulip glass of wine. So imagine, imagine a regular tulip wine glass and pour your champagne in it because of the shape of the tulip glass. And I will insert a picture right here if you don't know what a tulip glass is. So I'll try to put it right here. Um, because of its shape, it keeps the bubbles in. It keeps our carbonation in, but in the meantime, it allows the aromas to come through uh, to our nose when we sip on champagne. So that's my two cents on champagne glassware. The very last thing that I wanted to mention and talk about is, of course, what to pair champagne with, what foods really go well with champagne. My absolute number one favorite thing to have with champagne are oysters. Because of that limestone taste in champagne, uh, because of the terroir and the soil that the grapes are grown in, I feel like it is just, just a godsend. When they're together, champagne and oysters, perfect, perfect combination. I'm, my mouth is watering. I want some oysters now. Now, what else goes well with our champagne? I have a crazy suggestion for you. Test it challenge me and test it and tell me how you felt about it is popcorn not sweet popcorn your regular popcorn don't get the one that's completely saturated with cheese or sweetness or anything like that so get your popcorn maybe a little bit of salt on that popcorn and have some champagne with it it doesn't sound as bougie as you know oysters or some fancy dish you can be pairing with champagne but trust me when i tell you that little crunch and saltiness in your popcorn will make your champagne taste so 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 much better other two types of dishes that i suggest you pair with champagne are a little controversial too but again just try me test that out and tell me how you felt afterwards. I suggest that you pair your champagne with savory or spicy dishes, maybe Asian cuisine or something like that. I think because of acidity and lightness of champagne, it really balances out very savory dishes and very spicy dishes as well. So next time you have some spicy Asian dish, try that champagne. 
you, you won't be disappointed. Just try it out. And guys, this is everything I have for you today for today's video. So please go celebrate your champagne day uh, by the time you're watching this video. It is International Champagne Day. So here I chin chin and, and I hope you celebrate. Celebrate every possible uh, reason to be happy and drink some wine and champagne. So cheers to that. I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel if you like this video. I post videos on this channel every single week. So by clicking on that little notification bell, you will be notified of my new videos coming out. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, give it a like. That would really make my day. Don't forget the comments. And until I see you next time, cheers, everyone.